Drum magazine and later became the first black journalist to work at the Rand Daily Mail, where he provided a black perspective for the news readers, predominantly their white readership. Now, Nakasa was more than a reporter. He was a storyteller, an activist, an intellectual and an opinion maker. He was awarded a Neiman Fellowship in 1964 to study journalism at Harvard College in the United States, but the apartheid government refused to give him a passport, so he had to leave South Africa on an exit permit, which meant that he could not return. He died in New York in 1965, where he is buried. Now, in studio with us today, we have uh, the veteran South African journalist and a personal friend of the late Nat Nakasa, Mr. Joe Tlolu. Mr. Tlolu, good morning to you and welcome. Good morning. Now, you knew Nat Nakasa personally. Yes, I did. Um, I came in at the tail end of a fantastic era in South mm -hmm. African journalism. What was uh, it like working with him, though? Um, as I say, I was just at the tail mm -hmm. end. I was at the periphery of mm -hmm. his um, circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he was an incredible young man. Mm -hmm. um, he was only uh, 28 when he died, so he was very young. Mm -hmm. But his intellect was very sharp. He knew exactly what he wanted and how he was going to get it. Mm -hmm. Now... What are your most memorable moments of him for the short time that you worked with him? Um, I, I remember a few things. Mm -hmm. The one time is that I gave him a, 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 a story to publish in the classic magazine. And for a while he wasn't publishing it. So I went up to him and I said, Ned, what is happening with my story? And ultimately he pulled it out of his desk and he said, sit across there. Mm -hmm. And he went over the story line by line. He was an accomplished critic. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, I understood why he hadn't used it, and I knew where I needed to improve. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I also knew him socially. In the evenings, we would go down to the mm -hmm. classic uh, uh, dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. It was a shabin disguised as a, uh, a dry cleaning shop. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's why his magazine ultimately was called the classic. Mm -hmm. um, we would sit around there drinking. But he didn't drink like us. We really drowned in the stuff. He'd come in, order himself a small drink, and then mix it with brandy, mm -hmm. and then say, chaps, I've had enough, and mm -hmm. walk away. Mm -hmm. And we used to think he was a snob. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it that the dry cleaners was disguised? No, remember it was illegal to have a ship in oh. at the time, mm. and um, it was illegal to drink white liquor. Mm -hmm. So what would happen was that at the front, it was a normal business, a dry cleaning shop. But at the back, um, um, the, um, the owner sold liquor, particularly to journalists and to artists from Dorkey mm -hmm. House and mm -hmm. those areas. Now, as a journalist during apartheid, it must have been very tough. Uh, but during that time, what were some of the challenges that you, uh, as a journalist, and even Nat, Nat Nakasa faced at that point in time? Um, in fact... It was an era of total censorship. Um, so many of us went to jail because of the things that we had published, because of the views that we held. And in fact, his coming back is a symbol to us that we should never allow this country to re re regress to that state again, mm -hmm. uh, where there is no freedom of expression and no freedom of movement. Now, two days before his death, he told a friend, and I quote, I can't laugh anymore, and, I, and when I can't laugh, I can't write. Was that maybe a cry for help at that point in time and a longing for returning home when he was in New York? Um, the, 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 the story is that he was depressed at the time. That's why he had reached a point where he was saying he can't even write, uh, he can't even laugh. Mm. Um, he was depressed. Um, one of the things, obviously, is the fact that he couldn't come back home and he was stuck in exile and um, he was longing uh, for his old uh, Johannesburg. Now, being nominated for the Neiman Fellowship in New York, was that maybe his way out of apartheid? Um, no, in fact, in, in fact it's, it's interesting because Ned got out of apartheid mm -hmm. physically while he was here. Mm. When the government said you can't stay in the city. He lived in the city. He had friends where he lived and enjoyed himself uh, mm -hmm. against the rules that were in, in, in force at the time. 
when it said you can't have a girlfriend across the color bar, he just went across the color bar. He actually wrote about it in a piece where he spoke about a, a, an underground world where people defied apartheid and created a normal society, mm. um, an island in this world of apartheid. And he lived in that island. Again, an example of how defiant he was mm -hmm. as a person. So he was not just a defiant journalist, he was a defiant person, person on his own yeah. and he, a rebel on his he own. He was a rebel mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. In fact, that whole generation of journalists was a generation of rebels, people like Ken Temba, mm -hmm. um, who ignored every law that there was. Mm -hmm. Now, he was a tough journalist, Nat. He was. Would you say that we have journalists of his stature today? Um, I, th I think it's an unfair question. Mm. Each milieu has its own particular journalists who are able to define that particular era. And I think the Ned Nakasas, the Ken Temas, defined another era. And um, you, it's, it's not fair to try and compare that era with today's era. The circumstances are not the same. And we have different issues to deal issues, with. Issues, yeah, don't right. we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Mr. Tolu, why did it take more than 30 years for his body to be repatriated back to South Africa? Um, um, in the beginning, the, the, the government refused to allow him to be brought back. Um, the, the people around him, people like Letambuli, Kefas, and Miriam, tried to have him buried back in South Africa, and the government said no. And for a while, it sort of died down. Although his family was longing to have his body back, in um, a few years back, Matata Tzedu was the Neman for that year. And then he went, he went to visit um, 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 Nat Nakasa's grave in New York. From Boston, from Boston, he went to New York. Mm. And when he came back, he started agitating that we should do something about the memory of Nat Nakasa. That's when we started the Net Nakasa uh, 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 Award for Courageous Journalism. Mm. And this whole movement, which involved South Africans and Americans to try and repatriate his, his body. Mm -hmm. There were legal hurdles until a few weeks ago when the New York uh, Supreme Court said, yes, he can be exhumed. Mm -hmm. So the family went abroad and they were visiting. We saw the pictures a little bit earlier of the family being in New York. He's coming back home. Yes. What are the preparations like? Um, I think preparations are in, uh, in, in place. You've got the, the National Department of Arts and Culture. You've got the, the KZ and Department of Arts and Culture. You've got the, um, the Kwazulu, uh, I mean the Durban Municipality. The, the, the family, South African National Editors Forum, we're all getting ready for the big day mm -hmm. uh, on uh, September 13, when he will be reburied in Chesterville at the Heroes mm -hmm. Acre there. So September 13th is the big day. That is the big day. How would you want journalists, ordinary South Africans, to remember Nat Nakasa? Um, I'd like them to remember him as a man of courage, a man who believed in expressing his views, um, a man who believed in democracy. And it should always be a, remember, a reminder that we don't want to go back to the dark past. As always, thank you so much for your time yeah, and coming through you. to AMN. Thank you. That was Joe Tlolu, South African journalist and a personal friend of the late writer and journalist Nat Nakasa chatting to us about that. September the 13th, that is the big day. Well, that's your business news.